For me, the question is maybe less, you know, what can I do than what can we do and how can I be a useful component of that we. Hey everyone, I'm Sophia Bush. I am an actress and an activist and I host a podcast because I love to get deep and learn about topics and get trusted information from trusted sources. And that's why we're here. This is Need to Know. It's a conversation series to answer your most pressing questions from the most reliable sources. Today's topic is sustainability and the state of our environment. In 2018, approximately 146 million tons of municipal solid waste were landfilled, according to the EPA. Today, we are speaking with marine biologist, policy expert, and environmental activist, Dr. Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson, to ask, what is the state of our environment? In the macro, so many of us look around our homes and think, okay, I've got to recycle, I've got to reduce my waste, how can I lower maybe my water consumption? And then we're hearing that the planet is getting hotter and crops are being affected. It all feels very stressful. How concerned should we really be? Whatever is the, the maximum amount of concerned is how concerned. The most concerned. The most concerned. The question is, then, of course, what to do with that concern, because we are seeing the extreme effects of climate change now, right? We are already seeing record wildfires and hurricanes and floods and droughts, and all of this is happening at once. It feels like the Earth is both on fire and melting at the same time, because in some sense, it is. And so we need to be utterly concerned, but then, of course, not stop there. You want us to understand how grave the situation is, but you also talk so much about solutions, about reasons to be hopeful, yeah. about changes yeah. that we can make and, and that will be incredibly impactful. It's obvious there's a lot of work to be done. What do you think, for those of us at home who are concerned, who are not marine biologists, what would you name as some of the most pressing issues? When we think about climate change, I think it's really helpful to understand the major sources of the greenhouse gas emissions that are leading to this trapping of heat, which is warming the planet and throwing everything out of balance. And the major sources are electricity generation, transportation, agriculture and land use, manufacturing, um, and then there's like an other category. Then there are solutions, of course, for each of those categories. And so I like to think about which solutions I'm most excited to work on. No one can do it all. So it's a matter of figuring out how the skills that each of us have map onto the solutions that need to be pushed forward. If we all just focus sort of inward on our own carbon footprint, our own environmental impact, then we miss the chance to make the ripples that actually lead to change because we need like systems level change. We need to change everything. How do we build the best teams to collaborate on for these projects, whether it's getting people to the polls or getting people involved in climate solutions or getting people involved in social justice issues. It's about finding your role in a team. One of the things that you mentioned earlier can, can certainly um, both inspire me to action and make me feel like, what can I do? I'm just one person. And that's the big system change required. We find that so many marginalized communities are on the front end of receiving harm when it comes to environmental devastation. Why is there such disproportion to environmental justice or the lack thereof? The disproportionate impacts on poor communities, communities of color, are really heartbreaking because they're, they're also unnecessary, right? It's, it's, a, it's an artifact of history. In a lot of places, low-income housing, public housing, is in floodplains that are very much at risk because of sea level rise and an increase in storm intensity. The same thing with lands that are already marginal in terms of propensity for drought or flooding. Those are the less expensive places to live often. You have communities that are much higher risk that also have much fewer resources to recover from the impacts of extreme weather that's fueled by climate change. So when we think about 
ways to address inequity. Thinking about our personal impact in all of those ways really lights my brain up, but it sort of has almost gamified my space, especially in the pandemic, working from home. I'm like, what's going on with those light bulbs? And what exactly is happening over there? And I wonder how my windows are. You know, I've really yeah. been able to yeah. get deeply thoughtful and, and, and to examine the space around me and see what ways I can make at least this zone for me a better one for the environment. And it, it is something that makes me feel hopeful. What is it that makes you feel hopeful? Hope to me as a word that often sounds a bit passive, like I hope that works out or I hope someone does something about that. As a scientist, when I sort of zoom out, what I see is a spectrum of possible futures. I see the possibility of a really dangerous future. If we don't get our act together, transition off of fossil fuels, protect and restore ecosystems, things could be very bad. And then I see a future that I would actually want to live in, right? There are things that will continue to change, but we can adapt and we can restore nature and we can transition to renewable electricity and we can have a world that's still delightful. And so the opportunity is figuring out like, how do we make sure we have the best possible one? And what can each of us do to contribute to that? And because there are so many different ways to be a part of all of these different solutions that we already have at our fingertips, that's what makes me hopeful. You just leave me like this every time. <laughs> I cherish you and your brain and you make me feel inspired. I'm very thankful to you for that. Likewise, you're leading the way, woman. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. Everyone, thank you for tuning in to Need to Know on Well and Good. We will have some resources linked for you from this amazing conversation with Ayana. We'll see you next time.